Uh, hi folks, this is uh, a, uh, an explanation of a new script uh, I've developed to track uh, and deal with scenery. Um, I'm going to go through this um, in order. Okay, I'm going to explain why, uh, what the, even the use case is for it, and why we're using it, and why I chose to to spend some time on it. I'm then going to give the the quick rundown of what the player will see, so uh, the information. Um, and the, of the tool and what, what you can do with it and what it will do. Uh, a quick demo, the requirements it needs. Um, and then I'm going to talk about what the mission designer can do, uh, uh, how they can use the tool to make better missions um, and the exact things that the tool will do. And the last thing is I'll talk uh, probably to uh, developers or people have accidentally not hit the uh, pause button uh, about what the script does under the hood and how uh, do a deep dive on the uh, the technical aspects and, and how it makes persistent uh, scenery. DCS is missing strike as a simulation in general. We have these beautiful maps and we're, we're, we're not blowing up enough buildings. Um, this comes from the legacy of the A-10 which was a CAS vehicle and um, CAS is great, but the majority of warfare is about bombing the other side, strike, interdiction, high value targets, uh, and buildings. And we're missing out. We have these huge maps with millions of buildings that we could be using as objectives. We're not using them. Uh, and this script will encourage and make use of those maps, uh, which will provide a lot more realism to uh, the simulated uh, DCS missions that you can have. So the first part is scenery persistence and by this I mean this will the script will track uh, what blows up in a mission and uh, persist it through to the next mission if you're interested in that kind of thing. So I'm going to show you, I have already prepared uh, a, uh, a map or a situation where this town was uh, bombed uh, quite a lot. I'm going to run the script and it's going to uh, would run at the beginning of a mission and it will look at the database of all the things got blown up and it would do this. So it would uh, place an explosion uh, on the ex previously exploded um, uh, building and blow it up again. Uh, additionally to this, if I wind on time, um, I will place down uh, big smoke markers from DCS. So uh, after those, uh, the, the dust has settled, you can see that some of these have little smokes, some have big smokes, and this is done like... Uh, uh, if if we, if you smoked everything, it would just become a, a nightmare and kill frames. But uh, I've just done some sort of random uh, picks out of what blew up. The second part of this is uh, the tools that you can get with map markers. So this is a uh, map marker placed here, and depending on what text we put in here, or if at all, uh, it will do something. So the first thing uh, we will do is designate this as a target that we're interested in. And this is done with uh, three letters, TGT. And uh, we're going to say target is a warehouse. And close this. Now, uh, this identifies the uh, exact uh, item. And it then puts it into a file on the hard disk so you can track it or do things with it. So if I if we go to our DCS uh, folder, it's now part of this uh, target list here, this scenery target list. Uh, it's uh, the ID is entered as a uh, the index of the table, uh, the text that we put here, uh, the model type was identified from uh, what we picked out, and then I've got the MGRS, the DDM, and the DMS, uh, the altitude. And uh, as you create more of these, uh, this list will build. And if you destroy them, this list will then uh, be deleted out. So you can use this as a master list to track uh, specific scenery, as well as just uh, track all scenery uh, in which the file does. Uh, anyway, the second thing you can do with this is just create an explosion uh, on the marker. 
we create a marker and without any text in it and just close it we will create an explosion at that point hit control and F11 uh, you can see this control F11 is really handy you can sort between map and the exact place in the world now creating an explosion is good for testing your mission and you will need to do this to make sure that all parts of the script are working so it's uh, a useful tool to have I'm just creating some explosions notice the explosions don't always destroy your scenery some scenery is built stronger than others you'll notice that we still have the explosion occurring if the script is running it will be tracking these as dead or alive so you'll notice that even though there's an explosion doesn't mean it's necessarily dead depending on what the scenery is sometimes hardened bunkers are difficult to get rid of and very large warehouses uh, you can alter the actual value of how much explosive is used uh, by editing the script directly so that's uh, tracking and exploding and the last tool that you can use is uh, to create uh, a code for a coordinate using moose um, and we do that by typing coord into the marker and it will update the marker and replace that with the code here so you can you create object equals coordinate new and the, um, the xyz for it and you can use that in a number of scripts um, as a uh, uh, to, 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 to literally move anything, create waypoints or um, put another explosion if you want. So those are the tools for the mission designer. Uh, so that allows the mission designer to um, create explosions and track scenery. Um, and a quick parting word on tracking scenery. Uh, what you do with this is up to you. Uh, you'll need to know about that. What I particularly do to it, I write that to a CSV and then I go off and upload that to web and create a, um, a web page on it. And uh, this has got lots of details that people can use as targets. The last section is about the deep dive into what the code's actually doing and uh, prerequisites. And you'll notice we're writing files to uh, your DCS uh, folder and that requires an edit uh, it's very popular uh, to uh, change the security um, so that uh, DCS can write uh, the only real issues with that security is if you download somebody's mission and code you don't know uh, then uh, enable that security it will uh, leave you open to things running on your computer Realistically, if you're downloading any missions, you should be reading through them anyway, and the code is all there. If you don't understand something, then uh, you don't use it. It's as simple as that. The code for this uh, contains some uh, things that I, I, I use quite a lot. So the first one is a, a function to write and save a table to file. Uh, and this one is at the start of the code um, and this allows me to save um, save tables uh, onto the disk and that, that's that's the fundamental part of the persistence uh, at the beginning of the mission uh, we check to see if we have an existing uh, scenery persistence table and uh, if we do then we load it into the current memory uh, from disk and the same for the scenery target list if we've got a specific scenery target list that we're tracking and it's available on disk then we will load that into memory too and if either one of these isn't present then we'll start a new one from scratch and that will be shown in the logs as well um, the logs will demonstrate uh, with a, a quick uh, uh, a point that says new scenery file from scratch uh, um, or an empty target list and that's just for the the mission designer because when you're you're changing the, these these files are completely portable so you can port uh, as long as you've got my script running and you've got uh, a target list from somewhere so let's uh, let's have a look at these what they look like 
the target list, as we said, was uh, the, the list of uh, the models and the IDs and um, uh, the um, the data that goes with them uh, that might be useful for someone trying to destroy them. Uh, so there's uh, a list of co uh, uh, DMS, DDM and MGRS if they want to track them down and that you can use that to build up uh, something in perhaps your briefing. Uh, these uh, are read uh, and um, acted on in real time. You can carry one of these from one mission to the next. It uh, doesn't have to be the same mission. You can just drop that in straight into your DCS world folder. And the same with scenery persistence. If you've reached a certain stage, you've um, blown up so many things. Uh, this file here contains a list of the coordinates of the things that have been blown up. And it is passed extremely quickly uh, when that mission is first launched. And these explosions uh, are done um, very fast, but I would uh, always check to see how things are getting on with this. So when these, when that is initially run, uh, it goes through a tiny little loop here. Um, uh, corrections, not that one. It is uh, up here. Okay, so it goes through a tiny little loop. It goes through your scenery file, loads it into memory, and then it creates a vector out of the coordinate that's presented. Uh, there's the X, Y, Z, and then it creates an explosion. You can adjust that value. Uh, 2000 is about 1000 pound bomb. Uh, and then what we do is we create a, a random uh, smoke on the on that coordinate or, or no smoke at all, just to perhaps don't persist. There is a current bug in DCS um, it might still be prevalent in multiplayer. It doesn't appear to be that, that uh, big smoke is shown after mission start. Okay, so the uh, uh, main part of this is there is an event handler, of course, and it tracks uh, event dead. And event dead is what happens when the scenery dies. And we take the object from that and we uh, pull out all the data that, that we want for it. So. The production part of the script sort of ends there. Uh, you don't need to have the marker parts where they, you, you create explosions as you can just comment out the rest of this uh, this script. That's why it comes in two parts. So the uh, the next part of this is uh, is, is mostly Frankie Frankie's um, uh, uh, scan objects uh, function, which scans objects very close to the mark point. And then uh, I think it was No Love that helped me with this one. Uh, we register scenery uh, into Moose database, and we can then get the coordinate, uh, the name, and all sorts of things. Once we got the coordinate, you probably get the weather or whatever you like. Uh, and drop smoke and and so on. And we then load that into a table, and this table here is the one that's saved to disk uh, periodically. Uh, the event marker is very similar. It's, it's kind of based on a smartened up version of the, the zoo script. Uh, event marker, uh, whenever you put something, uh, a marker down, then you get an event fire. Uh, in this case, we're using mark removed uh, because uh, we have to actually put something in and then uh, it's on, on the removal of the mark that something happens. So uh, if it's blank, then we have uh, uh, an explosion. Uh, we just create an explosion here the functions you can change these numbers how you suit uh, if it says coordinate then we create some text which says this and supplies the coordinate details and if we uh, type target then it just takes all the text uh, so the event data dot um, text and we pile that into our um, scenery or the target list sorry target list here so the save scenery table uh, turns into the scenery target list uh, on a schedule so those are all the parts of that uh, just remember that you need to have your um, mission scripting lure uh, desanitized for these to be able to save what you can do with this following on um, is some quite clever things I, I'm personally writing to a CSV file. The CSV file, uh, you can do a lot of things. You can import these into tables uh, on in, in uh, any database. 
Uh, you can even create a web page out of them directly, and so that's what I'm doing, some funky things there. Uh, but other than that, it uh, allows you to you take this and do whatever you like with that. Um, works fairly well, so uh, that's uh, all I have to say on it.